Welcome back to Good Morning Tobago on Tobago Updates. Well, viewers, like I said, before we went to the break, I am here at Friendship Estate where we are going to be giving you a bit of the history of what's happening now and some things are to come in a little bit. But to get into some of the history of this very important estate here in Tobago, I'm going to be introducing you to Mr. Alexander Collins. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. All right, so Mr. Alexander, you have been here for quite a long time. Yes, yeah, since 1976. And you would have come after your father and so on? Your sure, right. So you've been working on this, this is a family family thing here, working yeah, on this estate? I worked on this estate when I was about 14 years, you know. Mm. Yeah, I get, the first time I get back pay, I get back pay on this estate, which was about this $36. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> can't really do much with that money now, no. but I mean, it was something back then. Yeah, that time it was plenty. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and you've remained here and you've continued to work. Yes, but plenty of the building and structure destroyed. So I'll just move it around and you get a little idea where it was there, where mm -hmm. it was there and things like that. All right. So as I move it around, like how old is this estate? Do this you know? Estate, uh, I go be 60 years this year, mm -hmm. and my great grandfather worked in this estate. So this estate that would be two children, maybe more, mm. and for a very long time. And what can you tell us about what happened here before? You know, what were some of the activities that used to take place? Well, um, in the estate, yeah, normally yeah, the workers come and work. The boss was living in the pickup mill over there, mm -hmm. so yeah, the workers used to come to the estate and work. Who doing copra? We driving tractor, picking up coconut, we cleaning the coconut trees and them. We is mechanic, you have the shop and all different local nature of life you was there now. Well like you just take me around and just yes, show sure, me right, at some of these places. Yes, uh, where the area where the sheep pen was. Where mm -hmm. the main sheep there, nearly about thirty thousand or more sheep for the past years when I was around. So I taken you to the area but the building demolished, you could only see some little bits at the wall and things there still mm -hmm. of idea of the past you know, which yes. is down this way. And so then, they still use rare sheep here, three thousand sheep. Yeah. The, or they, they separate the young ones one side, mm -hmm. the big mothers and them one side and they get all the rams in one pen. Mm. So they so have them separate and let them go according to how they're feeding them. And then you, they also used to rear donkeys. Yes, well, the, the pen was in that area, the donkey and horse was on the next side right here. But as I said, the building and them demolished now. Mm -hmm. So I could only give an idea that was raising donkey and horse in the back here. So like how many donkeys and so on used uh, to be there? And the, the gentleman, he have about, about five donkeys. Around about five donkeys, but he had mule with them too. So he had donkeys and he had mule. The, the mule was to transport most time the 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 the, the four man. You see, right? The mule most time to go out and come in because those mm -hmm. days he had to get transport was on foot walking. No? Yes. So you glad to get a donkey to ride the uh, good go the distance. <laughs> so, so you used know, to ride the donkey too? Yeah, I get one and two times I would get a ride from a donkey too. That the same guy was living in the same village mm. up by me. So you know. So I used to get a little right. And behind your back here now is where they have the 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 mill after you do the cook. All where we standing out here so they used to get coconut show all on the ground here. All going all out there, all up the and here now is where they had the mill. The the mill now is after you do the they do the cupra work, is to cry the beans and them into that mill. Throw them into the beans them. Close so call out the copra house so they dry yes. all the copra for shipment and bag them and things like that. Mm -hmm. So this is a small area right here. And when did this stop operation? Well this stop operation when I was there in 76, it was working. Mm -hmm. I believe it worked right down to about in the eighties now. Wow. About in nineteen eighty, somewhere down there before them place here 
the own Gordon Grant used to run it, so Gordon Grant moved away with a white man from England named Wallace. Britain used to have white man used to run this, so he leave and he went away and different guys come. The whole system at the estate changed from that. You know, different people come, different yes. things happen. So they stopped doing the copra work. So that is why that end they, they shell out all the sheep, no sheep they. You see an open behind there, so that no means the donkey is donkey and the horse. Now they, they still today you have the horse pen on the next side up there so you could continue on that side there with the horses. So they're done with all the copra work on this behalf here. The all copra work done. Mm -hmm. So I crane you wrong now with, after they do the shell now from the copra. Where they, the mill the area where the mill was now busting up the shell them, turning them to fiber, shifting out the dust one way and getting all the straw and building them together and make things, I don't know if it's bed matches they was making those days with them, but plenty bed was making with fiber. No? Mm. And then we used to export that? Yeah, they used to export a lot of fiber from this mm. estate, by the bales, big bales from this estate. And then on the next side over here now, mm -hmm. there were the, 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 the person controlling the boss, the, the gentleman, from, so you have a garden into in the back behind there mm -hmm. and all the peacocks and pn so peacocks like um this estate was famous for peacocks, peacocks at one point and, in time yes peacocks and pn yeah it was the favorite place in tobago for peacock and pn you have the most bird of that was there wow since we walk in there we passing through them here you know mm -hmm. there was plenty all about there and thing plenty plenty Mm -hmm. But since as the, the person was doing the first business, he gone, the, as I said, people, other people come in, they start to catch them and cage them and cry them to Trinidad, catch and cry, cry cage them to go so. Mm -hmm. So everybody must have peacock from friendship. And friendship wow. today now, you have none no, to show no you. No peacocks left. Yes, I can't show you no peacock, not even a feather. <laughs> oh man. So but th this other breakdown place over there now, this breakdown place right here, yeah, where they used to do the fiber for the for the, the the shipping out of the country to sell. This house here now is the fiber house. Mm -hmm. You have the machine. You have the machine there, right here. This was the fiber house. Mm -hmm. You have the machine. I think it built quite up. They got thing like a small house quite up in the air. Yeah. You have the normal building with all the machine underneath there. And to the top have a head house, the fiber coming up through the machine, climb up and go up there. Uh -huh. And I don't want flipping out and one going so and the next one going so and he going down into a next machine and and he ramming, ramming and then he clamping with the wire everything there and then he dropping out. Huh. Yeah, that was the fiber. So that, uh, that sounds like a lot of excited work. Yeah, plenty of work, plenty of excited work. <laughs> and then this this little shed here now, this is an extension of the um the garage where all the vehicles and them got the tractors and them used to park and right between them so you have the place with the trailers and them for the tractors we tractor have the garage and then you have the area so for the trailers and them this house mm -hmm. this house you know is like you come from barbados you know you come and you so have it was no like a guest house. Yes, yeah, so you could have stayed there now and work with on the estate one time. Wow. And things like that. And then the office for you to go and get pay was right up on this first side of the building there. Mm -hmm. And then down below the underneath there was the garage. Down underneath on that side there. And of course these were before there were houses here, there used to be sugar mills. Yeah, this was mill first before people started to live there. Mm -hmm. Whether well, said the slave and then bring the stone and bail and bail and bail you know so it was sugar mill it was that was the mill them first before people really fix it up now and live and keep fix. all up to today they're still fixing and living you know because hmm. the guy they're fixing right wrong that one day and thing and making it look nice and thing and hmm. them building have very long age with them so yeah it was this was this part of the estate here mm -hmm. over the on the next side over there now there were the four man but now, since as they end up with so much of horses and the pastor there down there end up with so much of bush through to workers, lack of workers, they end up now, we have to clear up this side and bring them on this side here and then we have to lose the little area down in the back there now where we have now and use a couple of horses just to occupy the area down in the back there. Wow. 
So how many people were employed here back in the Haiti, back when you were young? When, like in the 70s, like in the 70s, uh, well, I go give our average wife feel is around about, about 21, 22. Mm -hmm. It could be a little more, eh? because you have people doing the corporate work. There was plenty of people was doing the corporate work there, mm -hmm. right? Families coming and doing the, from Canaan, Mount Pleasant. You look as close as you be, you walk and you come in. Then you have the drivers to so the tractors, them, they're not doing the coconut work. Then you have the um, the guys them walking by the sheep pen. Mm -hmm. You have the guys them walking with the donkey. Either that guy walking with the donkey and the horse in the back there. Mm -hmm. Then the foreman now, you have the guys them are doing wrong day. Wrong day now is a system like the coconut tree and them going up in there and all them trees going upside down it and getting tall. Mm -hmm. You cut down right wrong it. So they look all that wrong day and things like that. So, and then you have the people in the fiber house and then you have the mechanic. And then upstairs, yeah, it could be more, just a little more than that. Upstairs, yeah, yes. by the office, they yeah, about two persons was working inside it because, um, you know, you have a PD. Mm -hmm. So you have to be checking right. And then you came to this building to get your pay, and this is over 100 years old. Yes, this building, there, I come in here when I 13 years. Mm. This building have plenty age, plenty, plenty age with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100 and over. <laughs> yeah, 100 and over. Mm. Yeah, because this place they have seen my grandfather and them and them just start a different story them time <laughs> before and then they all get an average how long they build some of the building and them being you know. Certainly. Yeah. Now, I mean, being here now in 2023 and looking back, how do you feel about the change and, you know, the fact that we're no longer doing coconut and copra and all that sort of thing? And It's very sickening to know that it reached those scrums now. Mm -hmm. that all the, all the building can break down. You can't give a proper clue where the sheep was or not like that. All the birds, the peacock and peon, people take them who go on their way, who go on their way. And a lot of things malfunction. So it, it, it come like now, we, what we're trying to do, we're trying to see if we could find back. We're doing something different there. Eh? We can't mm -hmm. come back and do their steak Certainly up because not, yeah. all the field them take over a big bush and things like that and coconut die out. So we try now to mine some horses, mine some fowl, do some farming, encourage people to come around and view a different idea to do that, do that, that we go help people to come in and watch and view and see what we're going on and things like mm -hmm. clean up the place that you could see and view right away as far as your eye could see and things like that. Mm -hmm. So you ain't gonna be frightened when you come into the compound <laughs> and things, you know, especially ladies. Certainly, I mean, safety is always important. It's sure, right. So yes. you clean up the place and they look nice and things like that. And you know, just about the preserving the history part of it, because like like this this estate has transformed so many times over the years. Yeah. And it has a lot of history attached to it. Sure, right. But we don't want it to be lost. Well, if we keep damaging it like this, <laughs> we're going to lose. Mm -hmm. You understand? Just leave it like take over and bush all the building, break down, and nobody ain't paying attention. It's lost, we lost. Mm -hmm. When somebody come and pay attention and say, well, let me do that, let me do that, and brighten up the place a little bit now, mm -hmm. you'll find we go have a thing flowing now. Yeah, man. People will be in house, <laughs> so we get back lively. So, and why do you stay here still? Like, why? Um, well, Again, it's since 13 years, my mother, my grandfather, my grandmother, my mother, my father all walked right here. Mm. So I have a, a thing here, you know? Yes. Be very friendly. <laughs> right. And certainly very passionate. Yes, sure, right. All right. So, well, thank you, Mr. Alexander, for just giving us just, just a little look at... A taste. A little taste, because yes. trust me, there's a whole lot more. <laughs> a lot of it is in the bush, too. And we might get into some of that. So you don't want to miss it, because when we come back from the break, we're going to get into some more of Friendship, uh, friendship Estate. We are power, we are people in the sun We are beaches, we are rivers We are melanated ones We special and there is no denying Tobago is number one I am you and you are me Together we strong Welcome 
welcome back to good morning tobago on tobago updates well viewers i am here again still at friendship estate and yes this is a historical place because it was very important to horse racing and so on back in the day and as you can see there still are horses here there's a couple being fed along with chickens along with some ducks and to give us an idea what's been happening with the horses and you know just I guess for the animals, we have none other than Mr. Richard um, Stevens. Mr. Richard Stevens, sorry, yes. uh, who is one of the people that are in charge of taking care of the horses. Yeah, Good morning yeah. and welcome Good. to you. Hello, welcome. <laughs> All right. So tell me about the horses you guys have here. These are just two of them. Yeah, well, it actually have eight horses on the compound. Mm -hmm. You understand? And the scarlet are ducks and things are cooperated into it. And um, these are X-ray horses with nice temperament and thing and people friendly that you know they could come and do riding and thing at any age because we have people at, as old as 71 mm -hmm. last recently coming to ride horse and they all in intrigue about what they get they little check in on the horses and them in the nature and as well to the beaches and so on and thing and right well, i'm here i'm ready to, to tear the horses and them and you see, you see that in the distance there we are repairing our stables. Mm -hmm. you understand? And um, I will walk you by to show you that little part with the stables and our other horse coming up there. And plus we have little honey and all that thing which just do good with horses as well too, you know, nutrition and people have health and things. And I just like the atmosphere because I mean the, the horses, I don't know if you you can watch a little bit, the horses are so unbothered by the chickens yeah. and the ducks. Yeah. They're just there. <laughs> Yeah. Like family. Like, like yeah, family. And then, and then here is friendship, so at least we can say they are friends. Oh, yeah. certainly, yeah. certainly. Yeah. I mean, and um, you have been with horses for a long time. Yeah, right? I have a license on the Trinidad and Tobago Racing Authority from since 1988. And I have a trainer license mm -hmm. 21 years now. I get it in 2001. And, that's ah, and here so comes one of the hungry ones. That one is banana chips. Banana chips? Yeah, <laughs> she used to be very quick in the races, but ah. her temperament is nice and she liked to work with children and as well as the middle-aged people as well as everything mm -hmm. else. Yeah. Oh yes, and she looks like she, she loves to gallop. Yeah, she loves to run. She liked to run from in front too. <laughs> yeah, she kind of a little bo bullish and all too. Oh, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Let's see. So she says, my turn to eat now and all, you don't eat all this shit already. Yep. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> she ain't got the right pan yet. <laughs> oh um, man. But I mean, you know, what's it like working with horses? Well, it's an enjoyment that I, I love. Mm -hmm. You understand? I like working with horses. It gives you a kind of, kind of com competitiveness about yourself. Mm -hmm. You understand? You have to get up and get going. You have to keep the horses and them. But everybody say, it's song and, and ready to go. Mm -hmm. Calm. You understand? Yes. And they are very muscular animal but they're very delicate you understand and yes. you have to be able to visualize the first step of some ailment that's taking place with them if you're not here with them often then something could go unnoticed and it could lead to well i wouldn't want to say death but it is big chaos now. yeah you understand mm. and a mm. lot of work to kind of get it all straight now with that thing here mm. and yeah so we're constructing some stables here for the horses. Yeah, ten and a tack room and um, a feed room as well too. Mm -hmm. And we constructing a deck as well on on the on the um, thing with a tree with, with tree protruding through the building itself. Mm -hmm. yes, and that's in case people come to watch the chair and ride or something like that, they could go and enjoy like a drink or relax up there. The, mm -hmm. You know, son? This so, is so what is the vision um, for, for 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 here and reviving the estates? Well, for me, I see I see here uh, is a place where it's so natural, you know, son? and I just love to be here instead of buzzing, buzzing around cars and all them kind of thing, and the the well, the the whole thing about the whole estate itself. It kind of give you a sense to want to be here mm -hmm. and probably raise a family here as well too. No? Yes. You understand? Because you know, it have a lot of hiccups and things that are going around all around. You know, we're not spared any anyway, but sometimes you know, you just feel like safe in here because of the animals and 
all them things and mm -hmm. and you see progress meaning that I love to see nice things and I just trying to see this thing here where they're trying to incorporate here and I want to be a part of it mm -hmm. you understand and we have a lot of things else that um, we incorporate into our well I, I wouldn't want to say a project, project I would say like an enterprise yes. you understand and we do have some bees mm -hmm. in the back here you understand if you walk any distance here is the, the pasture with the horses and then come here um, part of the, the question they ask what what I see in here visualize well for me it's all about like maintaining the place and making a balance where you could get the money generated to that so that you know that you could do all that you could see and you want to see in here mm -hmm. and um probably I will say to be able to run the place you like you know they have the barracks and then they have a a place when they come to be go to house their horse and things so I trying to bring the, the place up to date mm -hmm. so that if we ask them or if they see it looking in a, a nice order they will probably they might take adventure and house their horses here which would be a plus for us and all too safety wise as well to bring in presence of police and all them thing into the, the avenue and thing and that's make it feel more secure and things so and it's staying in tune with what the history of the place was because I mean of course this was where people came long yeah. time to breed their horses and yeah. so on so I mean it's just sort of reviving that mm -hmm. I mean and um so you say out here is y just yeah we have um we have some honey box just right in the back of them trees and then we get a sneak up a little bit close without you know feeling unsafe mm -hmm. but they are European bees you understand they're not like this, the African bees and then we just be like aggressive a, aggressive yeah yeah and um we try to incorporate everything within nature you understand and try to be able to be able to sustain ourselves maybe we might get up a product to go out there mm -hmm. you understand and then when we have a little event and thing we could always have our crops and thing endorse into it maybe cook cook it as well for the people and them mm -hmm. you understand so that they'll be able to partake in it and then sell as well so they could go home and prepare it for themselves too mm -hmm. yeah and you can see a lot of money being generated from from the horses and so on and things so you could incorporate back into the garden and probably get people to buy some you understand and keep the place going yeah you i mean, mean and it, it I is want to, um, really beautiful here yeah, the um the bees the bees boxes right right there as you can oh, see oh yes that's an apiary yeah, i know um, want to yeah, you have a little close probably <laughs> <Certainly>. camera, <you laughs> could zoom up you could see a little activities going on mm -hmm. here and all too and it's a perfect place because you have all the flowers, all the flowers and everything for you to get that nectar. Yeah. Just so important because bees are like so essential to our ecosystem. Yeah. And everything is so connected with bees. Yeah. So it's 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 really nice. And the bees don't bother the horses. No, no bother the horses. The horses and them just eat right there. They see the, 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 the grass as well low there. So you know the horses and them just be in and out there and all them things. So mm -hmm. they don't really have no arm. Um, they are friends. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then all of the, the horses, they are x ray horses yeah, that they all have. Yeah. yeah. All right. And um, are there any plans to sort of breed horses here? Well, it 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 it's there because mm -hmm. breeding season starts in in Trinidad and Tobago on the fifteenth of February, which is a couple of days. Mm -hmm. And maybe if you don't have a stallion here, maybe you can get people to to house a two mare that get born on the premises and probably go on to races mm -hmm. we have some horses there maybe if you feel like bringing in a stallion and we get a fool from it and whatever and thing mm -hmm. and they look the pedigree and the looks maybe you never know we mm -hmm. could be racing it on our own if the races probably start back at this yeah maybe, maybe we can know. revive horse racing yeah, in Tobago yeah I mean uh, what, how, I mean what do you what do you think about that that idea well I am a licensed trainer and I will welcome that any day, any time. This is was, if I was in Tobago, living in Tobago and it had a track, I would feel more, but the track is in Trinidad. Yes. So it's kind of, I ain't saying competing, but if I was here now, I'd be more relaxed and, <laughs> you know, son. But, but at least you get to be around the horses, take care of them. And yeah, so well, on. this year, I really enjoy doing it. Mm -hmm. It's it's fun to be around people, scared, happy to ride a horse. Some people they reach 71 years and they say, um, I never ridden a horse and 
this endorsement into the horse or any corporation into the horse, I was so overwhelmed. They, some of them see it as epic. They have all kind of different fancy words and things. And I mean, that, that, that is cute. A vibes into me that are just wanting to just put it out there. No? Certainly. Yeah, certainly. and it's something that people really do enjoy. It, it attracts a lot, a lot of people from different ethnic groups. And tourism, um, I ride people from Turkey just a couple of weeks ago and they travel from here and they, they're really supposed to come back. So probably they get a taste of paradise and then they will have the wanting to come back yes. from Turkey into the paradise again. You understand? So, yeah, so I hope that all is well with her and she'll be able to travel back and we'll see how it goes from there. Yeah. yeah. And it's going to be amazing to when you guys finish complete the stables mm. and uh, they can have a proper a proper little home for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as that's already important. Yeah, well keeping them from sheltered from the sun and all them thing and then having them housed, you could be able to collect more money and wherever and thing and that we planting and looking to sell some money and things for um, for people commercially wherever and <laughs> it will work. You know? Nice. Alright, so tell us where we're off to now. Well we're off to here one of the um a well. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't know the, the age of this well here but But one, one of, of the my, secrets of, of yeah, Friendship Estate. Yeah, one of my favorite parts when I came here twenty years ago. Mm -hmm. I used to come here and I I watch here. And it was one of my secret spots. Mm -hmm. And and um, you could see how nature, nature it is, flowers on the ground. And then the horses love to come inside of here. Yeah, to relax and thing. Yeah, and stay away from the sun and thing. And maybe from me and all too from <laughs> looking to get them out for a ride. <laughs> oh Lord. So, and we have a, a nice little pond here. Yeah, pond. We just call it a lake. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if it's like the right term. <laughs> You know, but it's so nice with a lot of lilies and water ducks and things inside of there if Aha. you could get close enough. And most importantly, mud for the horses. Yeah, well, that'll keep them um, keep them the, cool. The, 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 food, the foot and all supple and all too, not mm. getting too hard and thing. you know. Oh wow, it's actually quite big. Yeah. It keep on growing and it just keep on growing because the water just flowing out mm -hmm. through the ground you know, and I mean how they, they say everything changing. Yes. You understand? And probably changing for the for the best. And of but course with all the lilies. Lilies and maybe some fish and things that people could come and chew a line there <laughs> and, and have a nice picnic day or a day out and mm -hmm. they don't know they in paradise itself. So do the horses like to come in and bathe inside in here? Inside of here and eat some of them shrubs and them inside of there, maybe the lilies and things here, the inside of there. Wow. Um chest height, meaning that up to the chest, mm -hmm. yeah, and they will waddle through the water and thing. And even when you call in them and all two, they will run across or swim across on the other side <laughs> because they know you can run, <laughs> run yeah, after yeah, them there. Yeah. Oh, they're quite smart. Yeah. Wow. And they just come and cool out in the water and all too. So mm -hmm. you don't really have to bathe them, but the little mud and thing that they get on the foot and so on, we will just take care of it and thing. Yes. And they say that so this this was a well, so there there, there should be a structure somewhere about somewhere yeah, in there. Somewhere in, in the middle there we probably see in the governor is there. Yes. And it probably just break down and thing and the water just coming up on it own and just spreading. And then when it, a lot of rain that we had from all about all the water accumulating this low spot. Wow. Yeah. So there there is some underground water around here. Yeah. That wow. is right in the middle there. Hmm. One of the yeah. many secrets at Friendship S. You, did you have um some wild cows and things inside of here and all too, you know? Wild cows? Yeah, that cow that didn't, I, I didn't say they didn't have no owners, but they were just roaming wild inside of here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, viewers, um, we have a lot more to show you. So I want to thank you, Mr. Yeah. Stevens, for this, this, this little part. Mm. But there's some more exciting things coming up after the break. So don't go anywhere. Wow, 
welcome back to Good Morning Tobago on Tobago Updates. And all throughout the episode, viewers, we've been showing you around Friendship Estate. But if you want to come, well, you are free to come. But there is a special way you can come and experience Friendship Estate in all its natural glory and learn more about its secrets. Because trust me, this place has a whole lot of secrets that we have not yet aired. But um, to talk to us a little bit about this special thing coming up, uh, we have none other, than, none other than Mr. Sean McCoon. Good morning and welcome to you. How are you? Morning, Candice. Um, all right, so the Friendship Estate is basically a heritage site or many, many um, activities of historical sig significance would have occurred here over the past century or so. Um, what is important is for us to know, now that we're getting the type of media exposure thanks to Tobago updates, is that you have three entities that operate on the Friendship Estate. You have the Friendship Riding Stables, you have the Friendship Arts Foundation, and you have the Friendship Farm. Friendship Farm does organic farming. Um, it's a new operation, a couple years running, and um, you know, as the infrastructure is built out, you see more and more interest and more and more crops being um, cultivated, etc. Then you have the Friendship Riding Stables. I think you would have um, done some, some walking through in that area. Yes. And um, it's a really nice thing for families, for visitors to the island and some really great activities happening there. Mm -hmm. Also, you have the Friendship Arts Foundation, which I want to tell you a little bit about. So we have the Friendship Festival, which has happened for 12 years running. It's right on the spot. Right, right on this very spot. Um, it's a hidden gem. You have many people that don't know about the festival, but what it does, um, it, it creates a space mm -hmm. for artists, for musicians, for people who are into visual arts, people who are into creative arts and other things. Um, culture and history etc to come and really showcase their work. Sometimes we have resident artists that stay here. Um, there's actually an Airbnb at one of the mills um, and um, that is also being developed and some new furnishings being put in. Mm -hmm. Also the Friendship Festival is um, happening this year from the 24th to the 26th, which is the weekend after Carnival. All right, and I mean, as we're talking about that Friendship Festival, let's have a walk and see at least to some of the, well, you could tell me, tell me where we are walking to. Right, so this mill, um, we have a family that resides here and there's an Airbnb at the top of the mill. Mm -hmm. And over at the other mill, we have some other residents. Um, a studio is actually being built there um, now and a few other, um, basic pieces of infrastructure needed for accommodation. Yes. Right? All of this is being done under the friendship. And this is, of course, a very naturalistic experience. So this is not luxury. This is... No, no. Yeah, an eco-friendly kind exactly. of experience. Off the beaten track, um, many of our visitors to the island want something different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, close enough in the west of the island. Um, you have all the amenities around, you have the airport, you have different things mm -hmm. um, that's well within reach, but you have, as I said, a hidden gem. Yes. Now the festival actually takes place over here. You would see some activities happening, um, preparations being made. This area is actually where the stage would be. These things are cleared out. You have mm -hmm. a stage here, you have sound, you have lighting, you have things like that and it is mm -hmm. promising to be much bigger and much better this year. You also find that um, we give <laughs> local artists a chance to showcase their work and their mm -hmm. talent. Um, we have a good lineup this year um, that promises to be quite interesting, mm -hmm. right? Um, if you look over there, you'll see a teepee. Oh, nice. Yes. Yes. Right? It, it used to be um, a sail for a yacht. Oh. A sailboat. And um, it was recycled to make a teepee. Now we also have camping 
activities here on the farm. Mm -hmm. Occasionally you would find that um, some of the visitors to the island want to actually have the camping experience and they would do it right here. Mm -hmm. Right? So those are some of the activities that we have lined up. Also for the festival candles we will have a craft and artisan market and um, we invite any craftspeople or at least people who have art, who have craft, who have books hmm. to come on down to the festival and display. Saturday night being the most um, packed with activities. I mean, and this is a, such a, an amazing space because like literally as he is speaking, there are some butterflies and dragonflies right here. I don't think you've seen this many <laughs> and the different type, colors and types all of that as well as there are some interesting birds like as he's speaking i'm a little bit distracted because there are some birds that you're seeing there that are not birds that you typically see out you know just, just out and about but of course i mean it's difficult to get it there right now but yeah there's so much to experience yeah 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 absolutely um and just on another note candace the friendship arts foundation is actually a, a registered ngo mm -hmm. um we have three directors mr derek hearn who is the caretaker and owner of this estate at well at least the caretaker of the estate and we have um <laughs> and we have Mr. Sheldon Blackman, the son of the late great Rashwati I, founder and creator of Soka Music. Nice. Um, he is very instrumental in being an advocate for this sort of living and this sort of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, natural, eco-friendly and in tune with the natural environment and myself um, as a director. So what we're bidding to have done here is um, for here to be registered as a UNESCO heritage site, as a protected site. So the NGO, which is Friendship Arts Foundation, is actually doing the proposal, um, as we speak it's in train, mm. um, to have this area recognized right here in Tobago as even further, um, um, not just a UNESCO heritage site, but something that attracts more investment and attracts more um, at least visitors to come and see the hidden gems that we have right here in Tobago. And I mean again I can't even begin to see how much hidden gems we actually have here on this estate with the amount of history that, that, that we've had. Um, so yes yeah, so I guess for the viewers sake how can they get in touch with anybody first of all if they want to be a part of the Friendship Festival or if they just want to come here spend a day and experience it for themselves. Right so there's the Friendship Riding Stables Facebook page. We are actually revamping our website at this time which is Time Stops to Be com right that will be up and running again at some point later this week into next week but you can look on Facebook you will see Friendship Festival TT and you will also see the Friendship Riding Stables you can reach out on Facebook share information if you're interested in coming down to the festival if you're interested in bringing our group to do horseback riding you can reach out via Facebook on that page all right, I want to thank you, Mr. Sean McCoon. And of course, I want to thank you to you know, the Friendship Riding Stables and the farm, everybody who have been so welcoming to us here and just letting us come and experience and see for ourselves what is still here on this very historic site in Tobago. I mean, Tobago, we have quite a lot of history and we don't even know all the history that we have. We don't even, we barely dare to tap into it. But that's what we at Tobago Updates are here for. Just bringing these things out for you, the public, to you to come and enjoy. This is going to be, if you're into this kind of thing, if you're into just that naturalist um, experience, this is the place to be. If you want to experience the horses, if you're into butterflies, and I mean, there's just quite a lot of butterflies here. I don't know if you've known, but you know, Tobago has been going through a rough time with butterflies. We're finally getting back our butterflies here in Tobago. So, and it's so wonderful to see the many different colors that are here, just, just in walking around, you know? So if that's, I mean, something that you're into, if you want to learn about horses, you want to experience the birds, yes, the beach, just hiking, there's so much you can do here. Get connected and come on down. All right, it's that's it from me, Candice Jackson. It was such a pleasure being here. And thank you, thank you for viewing and it's a brand new morning, rise up to a brand new dawn and as the passion start to rise, the energy fill the skies. I say thanks a favor to wake up and hear me neighbor. Sixty to
thousand people strong. 